Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. I'd like to welcome you to today's devotional, that of Thursday, April 9th, 2020. Today is Maundy Thursday. It is a continuation of the Holy Week for this week. And um, once again, I'd just like to thank you all for joining me. Uh, to my understanding, I have actually been able to reach out to those outside of our church, outside of the state, even outside of the country. So uh, that truly, that's absolutely wonderful. So I'd like to thank you once again for joining me today. Uh, our scripture for today will come from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 30 through 35. Uh, the screen from which I'm reading uh, has the scripture in the New International Version. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same, the word of God for the people of God. Tensions are high here in Matthew 26. We're closing in on that fateful Friday. Judas has revealed he will betray Jesus, but he hasn't done it yet. Jesus has overseen the Last Supper, blessing the broken bread and poured wine, but his body hasn't been broken and his blood hasn't been spilled. The disciples are struggling to come to terms with the fact that not only is their leader in danger, but that he will be deceived by one among them. Jesus makes an allusion to Zechariah 13, 7, when he quotes, I will strike the shepherd. Quick aside here, Zechariah, one of the prophetic books of the Old Testament, was written 500 years prior to this. In this book, the Lord makes a lot of promises, but also foreshadows the betrayal of his own son, which, I may remind you, he hasn't even born yet. He even reveals the amount of silver Judas will betray him for. Imagine how strange that is, having your death ascribed centuries before you're even born. Anyway, this part of Zechariah, from which Jesus quotes, records God cleansing the world of sin. This is not the first time he does this, but this is a notable event. And this is no coincidence either. Jesus is due to be crucified, which we know he endures because of how much he loves us. He references God's cleansing of sin just days before he forgives us of our sins. Pretty amazing. Despite this illusion, Peter speaks for all of the disciples when he pleads that no matter what happens, he will remain faithful. Jesus, however, refutes that, telling Peter that he, too, will fall away. And thrice that night alone, for that matter. The disciples are beside themselves. How would we handle being told by the faith, uh, by the Lord himself, rather, that we would stray from our faith? We would feel disappointed in ourselves. We would beat ourselves up. God telling us the truth in general can be painful in many different ways, because the fact of the matter is that truth hurts. The most important things to understand in life are often the most difficult to accept. When God tells us these things, he is providing us a golden opportunity to take a good look in the mirror and fi figure out how we can improve. In those moments of weakness and struggle, disappointment and self-doubt, we have to be able to better ourselves. Yes, we will sin again. Yes, there will be times when we fall short of our faith. We cannot be defeated by this truth. Instead, we must learn and work to grow from it. God will not stop loving us because we sin, and God also wants to be honest with us. In turn, we must be honest with ourselves. How can we be better Christians? The truth hurts, no doubt. But instead of letting the pain overcome us, let us instead grow beyond it. Will you please pray with me? Lord, the truth hurts, but we are thankful that you provide us with it all the same. We appreciate your honesty and, of course, are forever grateful for your unending love. Help us to grow from the truth and help us to understand the things that are hardest to understand. We accept that we are not perfect and that we can always improve. We ask that you guide us toward that path of faith when it seems easiest to wander astray. We love you, we praise you, 
We thank you for all things. And it is in your name we pray. Amen. This is my last devotional for this Lenten season, so i just like to thank each and every one of you for walking with me through these last several weeks. It's been a genuine joy to write and speak to each and every one of you. Um, with that, I hope my and all of the other authors' words have, at the very least, inspired some food for thought. Um, but with that, thank you so much, and God bless you all.